Hello everyone, welcome to your Australian accent lecture. So I would like to remind everyone that today's lecture is about how to deal with the Australian accent featured in the listening exam and not for us to imitate the accent itself. So this lecture will tell you everything you need to know about the existence of this accent. Why do we have this accent in the first place in your listening exam? the history of um, the test itself and Australia as a whole. So without further ado, we shall begin. First, your pronunciation classes are the ones which are meant to enhance your speaking skills needed for your speaking examination. Therefore, your pronunciation lectures both 1 and 2 will be discussed for enhancement of your speaking skills not the accent lectures so sir what is the ac accent lecture um, purpose in the first place well the purpose of your accent lectures is for your listening examination and you will know later why and how so when it comes to your pronunciation lectures which would be on some other occasions we are going to learn how to neutralize your accent without any regional mix of your tone and without localized way of delivery. So we are going to improve both our pronunciation and delivery in a neutral manner which are deemed appropriate for the speaking exam. So right now, what we are going to prepare ourselves for is the accent for the listening subtest. Now, we're going to make some accent comparisons. Before we proceed with the differentiation and comparisons, I would like to give accent a definition first. Well, accent, this is the combination of vowels and consonant sounds which are very different from how others speak it. For example, in the Philippines, right? So, my real name is Kevin. Yeah, that's that's the real name. That's how it is spelled out. But when my aunt, who is from Cebu, calls me, she doesn't call me Kevin. She actually calls me Kevin. So, that's how she speaks my name. And that's, that gives us an impression of what accent is. This is a very peculiar way of how people or group of people living in a particular area chooses to emphasize a certain part of the language which is in the speaking exam. So that is your accent. Same spelling, same word, but differently pronounced. So when it comes to the contributing factors of the accent, number one, the location. For example, since English was derived um, many centuries ago, um, I think 1600s if I'm not mistaken, there are some reasons, all right, in which when it diverted, let's say it originated from Germany, the Anglo-Saxon Empire, it they propagated it in the UK, Great Britain, that's why it's English because it's from England, okay, then the English people colonized both Australia and uh, America. So that's the reason why they have the same language, but they have different pronunciation. Because even in the Philippines, we are only a very small country, yet there are a lot of distinctions with the accent. You will definitely know that a person is from Baguio City, from Pangasinan, because those people there are using their dialect differently. They, they really sound very kind and gentle. But when you go to the middle part, middle section, Nueva Ecija, most of the people here add eh with the stress of their speech, like eh kumain na ako eh. That's some example. So we add eh, that's a part feature of the accent. But in their case, in northern people's case, they do the I. Eh, I, kumain na ako ay. All right, so that's, that's the difference between the way how they use their language in the speaking exam. Or sorry, in the speaking um, part of the language itself. So now... When it comes to the comparisons, American accent has what we call this letter T. The letter T in American accent could be silent, um, especially when you hear people say 
internet you know they 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 do not mention the t um international all right so those are some sample of the inter which they don't pronounce the t although it's not entirely wrong because most of the people from the philippines are more accustomed to the american accent since we watch a lot of american films we watch a lot of american shows music and such so we commonly mistake that removing the t would make the articulation much better which actually is not so it's not internet it should be still internet that's how you neutralize the accent that's how the spelling of internet is in the dictionary and there are some pronunciation symbols which we would be using to help us guide ourselves into the production of the speech needed for the particular word now it could also be a d like in the case of the word butter butter they don't pronounce butter in america they say butter instead of hearing the letter t they would pronounce it as a d which is again not the right thing so when you say internet when you say butter that's actually right in their region but since we are not going to imitate any accent we have to neutralize it we have to say internet and butter respectively now the british accent the r is usually missing at the end part like instead of hearing the word butter butter better that's how you're going to listen to them now there are some cases in the british accent that both letter t and letter r we call it the glottal stops altogether um, are missing so for example instead of hearing the word better you will only hear the word be uh, all right that's how they pronounce the word because they don't add the t they don't add the r that's one of the few reasons why we conduct accent training like this because we don't want to imitate the accent we want to make ourselves able to recognize the sound produced in the listening exam so that we may be able to become more attentive to it so when you listen to beta or bea oh you will initially recognize that hey this is a british accent so i have to be careful with my r i have to be careful with uh, how i will hear the words now the problem is those features both the australian or rather both the american accent and the british accent features can be found distinctly in your australian accent and it could be really difficult especially if people do not essentially know the ways of how australian people speak so their a sounds as a long i okay it's very texas young sound and then the e is a short i so we will be comparing them together using some practices later. So just hold on tight on that. So here is the map of Australia. All right. Also known as the land down under because this is the continent separated from the rest. Okay. It's in the southern part of the world, southern hemisphere. Although South America is technically in the southern hemisphere as well. Well, they only belong to, uh, they, they also is connected. Uh, it is also connected to the North American Peninsula. So in terms of this map, some people pointed out on the internet that, you know what, the Australian map kind of looks like the dog's head and the cat's head fused into one. So if you take a look at the left side, you know, the dog ear in the Kakadu NP, the Gulf of um, Carpentaria, then you have the Karatha X mouth, yun yung kanyang nose, the, the the chin of the dog is uh, the Bustleton Albany, yeah? and then that's the entire head. Before yung Queensland, yun naman yung right side, that's the cat's head. They, they, uh, they mentioned it. Cape York looks like the ear of the cat, and then the nose is the Rockhampton, the Brisbane, and then Melbourne naman yung chin ng cat. So, that's uh, how the Australian maps looks like now. Right? Kind of reminds me of this cat dog show uh, I used to watch when I was a kid. You know, there's a cat and there's a dog fused into one. No, ano kaya sila to mata eh? No, but the thing is, yun, um, but this is the entire map of Australia. Next is Australia is known as the world's largest inhabited island and also the smallest continent. So if you compare with the continents of Africa, Asia is the largest, uh, Europe. Australia is actually smaller than Europe, even smaller than Antarctica. So it's actually the world's largest inhabited island and the world's smallest continent altogether. 
So you have to be careful if people, you guys are your target country to visit, to, to study at, to work is Australia. Uh, there are a lot of critters there. Like there's a meme online that is always being posted that everything in Australia is trying to kill you. And that is actually true because they have a lot of animals in their ecosystem. So we shall proceed with learning more about the history of this uh, country continent slash largest inhabited island australian english began diverging from british english shortly after the foundation of the australian penal colony of the new south wales in 1788 so just some brief history altogether most of the colonizers are actually either from spain portugal and great britain because that's very common in the past they want to conquer most of the world they want to enlarge their colonies they want to um, strengthen their forces they need some sources resources especially food so this is the case of the philippines becoming um, the colony of spain back in the days um, so as mexico diba? so the british colony actually colonized the australia and then the american uh, continent the North American continent now the main problem here is that they don't find the entire Australia country as very appealing unlike what they did to the American uh, country because when they found out okay what is this this is barren land we can't mine anything unlike in the US where they can get valuable resources example silver gold uh, and the uh, crop corn because that's how corn became one of the most important products of the world when it comes to the marketable good which is itong tradable source so in Australia there's nothing there's just a bunch of wild animals so what they suggested since there are a lot of criminals already in Great Britain and uh, they they thought, hey, where, where, where are we going to put these criminals? Where are we going to put the convicts? Why not throw them out in Australia? Because it's far away and they will not uh, be able to be happy there because there's nothing there. So what happened next was they started this penal colony. It became the largest prison. Okay, uh, Obviously, when you have your prison... You need to also have wardens, soldiers, and uh, things to work. You know, people who would be cleaning the cells, um, people who would be selling food. So from then, it expanded. Like, I want my family as a, as a jail warden. I want my family to be here with me because, you know, travel is very difficult back in the days. So you need to, like, stay on a ship for three to four months. That's how tough the travel is. It's... They just pray that the wind would take them to the destination. So it's really a very difficult thing to do. So what they did is that they, together with their family, they invited their families there. They propagated from generations and then they expanded from then on. So you know the thing. That's, that's also one of the reasons why most of the Australians, uh, the accent became very thick. Again, the accent of a person does not necessarily reflect his or her educational background but that is really the case in the past most of the criminals okay who they caught which they sent to the australian penal colony back then they don't know how to construct grammar properly you know when you listen to people mostly who are illiterate they cannot hold up a sentence which would be very Filipino. They don't know some words in the Filipino language, even in our country. All right. So what we are going to expect for people who did not even attempted to learn their, even their own language. So they would be inventing their own codes. Right. And that is what happened here in Australia when most of the people started mixing the British accent 
it derived from they derived their own version of it so that's the reason why the british accent and australian accent are very much alike okay because even even the u.s um <clears throat> even the u.s uh, British uh, accent, especially in Boston and New York. Most of the people from Boston and New York back then were very educated. That's the place where they want to spend their time. And after the ships were were traveling, all right, they stay in the Boston area, in New York area, kasi malapit dun yung ports. So sila yung mas cultivated yung accent for the British um, tone. But in Australian accent, most of the people who are who were there in the past were actually criminals convicts so that's why there is a divergence from the main okay main acceptable language due to the lack of education of the speakers in the past i'm not saying now but since yun yung nakasanayan yun yung nagstick yun yung way nila ng pamaraan paano magsalita you know when people learn how to speak even us, we know how to speak because of the environment. We know how to communicate because that is how our parents communicated with us. That's how people around us communicated. So if I was born in Japan, for example, and raised in Japan, I would know Japanese. If I was raised in China, I would know um, Chinese. You get the point. But here, since they were raised by people who were criminals then, and uh, they used the same method of how they speak, it stuck. It got stuck. And uh, up until now, the accent itself is as we know it, the Australian accent, a very thick, very heavy accent of the English language. So, the term Cockney has both geographical and linguistic associations. Geographically and culturally, it often refers to working class Londoners, particularly those in the East End of Australia. Linguistically, it refers to the form of English spoken by this group. So whenever they say Cockney, it means that these are the people who are workers, all right, who can speak English, who can hold conversations in an average manner. So it's sort of a mix of cultivated and general accepted language. So ito yung mga people na lilo. Like, I know how to communicate with cultivated people. I know how to communicate with uh, the ones who know British accent. And uh, I know how to communicate with people who knows the, the local dialect with its features, especially the accent and, and highlights and the stress of the sound. So, three main varieties of Australian English are spoken according to linguists. We have the broad, we have the general, and we have the cultivated. They are part of a continuum reflecting variations in accent. So, it does not necessarily mean that broad speakers does not know how to um, speak in a general accent relatively to one another so now majority of australians speak the general australian accent that's the reason why we call it general because this is generalization of most people who speak the accent this predominates among modern australian films and television programs uh, the accent itself is used by the wiggles danny minogue kali minogue heath ledger the one who um, played Joker in the Batman film trilogy, all right? Nicole Kidman, Naomi Watts, Kate Blanchett, Melissa George, and Delta Goodrem. Here are some of their photos. Uh, these are the, some notable personalities who know how to speak the general Australian accent. You know, but the general population, we could probably say around 90% of the people could speak in this um, variation of their dialect. Now, broad Australian English is recognizable and familiar to English speakers around the world. So when you say Australian accent, Australian people, most commonly from the outside of their country, this is what we initially thought how they speak. So this is how people outside their country thinks how they speak the accent itself in general. So here are some of some famous personalities who speak this broad Australian English. Unang una na dyan, si Wolverine, na? si Hugh Jackman. All right. Next is uh, the term, slang term, ocker means speaker. So when you say, are you the ocker today? So it means, are you the speaker today? Then you have the strine, which means Australian. Are you from here? Oh yeah, I'm strine. It means Australian. Okay, that's how they communicate. Next is the cultivated Australian English. So these are the ones, these are the people who have attended 
their education, who reached um, degrees for their education. So they are very similar to the British received pronunciation and is often mistaken for it. So samples are Cyril Richard, Judy Davis, and Geoffrey Rush. So these are some notable personalities who can speak cultivated Australian English. So if you want to know more about how the cultivated Australian English sounds like, you may, of course, check the British accent class that we will be conducting very soon. Now, these are some samples of the what they call pronunciation symbols which you will be using for your British, uh, rather for your Australian accent and British accent comparison. So when you see the word on the first one, the EI is pronounced as A, as in the word today, like day, Wednesday, Sunday, Monday, all right. Now, in Australian accent, they do not pronounce the E sound like that. They pronounce it like the E sound, and it will be replaced by I. So instead of hearing the word A, they pronounce it as I. So instead of hearing today, they say to die. All right. So they say classmate as classmite. They, they don't say mate. They say might. She is might. To die, to die, might. That's how they pronounce the word day and die. Now, another problem is the word row. Instead of hearing the word row, they produce the sound as roy. So instead of saying, see you tomorrow, Kevin, you will hear, see you tomorrow, Kevin. All right, that's how they pronounce the sound of row, as in tomorrow. Next, you got your me, and then instead of saying the word me, they say Mia. Why? Because when you add R, okay, it will lengthen the vowel. And since R is not in non-existent in Australian accent, particularly sa British, instead of hearing the word mere, magiging siyang mere na lang, mawala yung er. Okay, na part. Next, the boot would, would be sounding like a lot like boat. So when you say boots, that is some nice boots you got there, Kevin. You will hear, that's some nice boots you got like Kevin. You will hear it like that. Again, that's the reason why we, sh we must be careful with your accent because it could be confusing for the listening exam. That's some nice boots you got there, Kevin. From that is some nice boots you got there, Kevin. See how they differ? It really is very distinctive. Next, you have your cow. Pronounce as cow. Cow. I'm seeing so many cows right now. So that's how they're going to um, produce a sound because that's how they produce it. Nine, again, that N I N E, nine will be only sounding like noi. How many cows? Noi cows, right? Nine cows. Again, well, that's how you're going to listen to that. That's why at the beginning of our discussion, Sa orientation, I told you that if you would be encountering the Australian accent as your listening test, na accent, you are probably cursed. So if you guys are religious, better start praying to your God right now because gusto natin na wag nyo ma-encounter to kasi nga ito yung pinakamahirap na accent. So probably... Pray harder, okay? So, sir, how often does the Australian accent come out in the test? Well, 70% chance it's British. 20% it's uh, uh, American. Then one-tenth would be Australian. So, very slight chances that you might encounter this. But, you know, the moment we encounter this, we must be prepared. That's why we are teaching this um, every two months, okay? So, you got these uh, pronunciation symbols coming along. So we would be using some of the uh, speaking steps for you to learn to know how to speak the Aussie way. Again, I'm not going to highlight this any further. Um, we're just going to breeze pass through this part because we are not supposed to imitate this anyway. We're just supposed to be able to recognize how their accent is spoken. So, of course... If you want to learn how to speak with their accent, you have to talk to a native or watch Australian films. This is actually a great practice for your recognition, listening skills. I want you guys to watch Australian films 
not for the purpose of imitating the accents you will see there, but for the purpose of recognizing the accent spoken there. In that way, you will be able to get used to it even more. Okay, next, um, learn to speak from the back of your tongue. That's how, how they produce the sounds anyway. The vowel sounds are very stiff. So you have to uh, clo hold the tip of your tongue as close to the roof of your mouth as possible while pressing the middle of your tongue down. So that's how they make the accent itself much thicker. Pay attention to the pronunciation of individual letters. Vowel pronunciation is the most significant difference between American, British, and Australian English. If the main difference between the general English language by the IPA or the International Phonetic Alphabet, th that's what we call the international acclaimed alphabet system, how the English must be spoken internationally. Americans don't pronounce the T, uh, British don't pronounce the R, but in the Australian accent, they mess up the vowel sounds, especially the E, the O, and uh, the A. So you have to really be able to recognize them. So we must be careful in this part. So yeah, uh, they also do some shortening of the language that ends with O. So maybe later I will be giving you some of those samples with an O. Okay, now is the common Australian phrases. Good day would sound a lot like good day. So instead of hearing the word good day, you will only hear the word, the pronunciation good day. Okay, in this case, will sound as good day. So once again, you will not be hearing the word good day. You will not be hearing them as good day, but good day. It's a good day to die, might. Like, huh? What are you saying? <laughs> so you have to be really uh, aware of how the accent is pronounced. Also, all soy. So, soy. October. Oiktoiba. August. Oigist. You. Yoe. True. Troy. Cheers, mate. Cheese might. See how they differ? So this is the way how they pronounce. Alright. So it's really difficult, right? If you're going to listen to your listening test, especially on part one, there are a lot of dates, a lot of numbers there, and you would be hearing Oi toy boy noi. Like, oh my god, that's October 9, huh? so you have to really be aware. Awareness is really very important in your listening skills that's why we're doing this okay I'm, I'm not going to uh, stop highlighting that the purpose of this lecture is for recognition skills to be built for this listening examination now these are the places in Australia which you have to be able to familiarize yourselves because most probably kapag nagkaroon ng mga maps in part 2 mga places sa kanila ang magiging um, examples. So, all right. Here are some of the locations. All right, Brisbane. No, it's Brisbane. All right. So you have to learn how to produce the words itself um, accordingly. Next is the Melbourne. All right, Mount Isai. Okay, Newcastle. All right, those are just some of the pronunciation of the places. Again, andyan na yung location, nandun na yung way how to pronounce it. So, pwede mo tong take a screenshot and then pause it and then you, you may be able to practice. But once again, you're not supposed to practice pronouncing them anyways. You just have to make yourself familiar with them. Okay, that's the goal. Next is common phrases. All right, zero. That's the English acclaimed, internationally acclaimed pronunciation. But it is actually pronounced as, you guessed it, zero. Alright, kasi nga yung O nila, inaalis nila yung O, nilagyan nila ng I. Alright, zero. Ten is pronounced as tin. Alright, four is pronounced as four. And then eight is pronounced as eight. So, four, zero, eight, noi. Diba? Ang hirap. Lalo kapag ka mga credit card number, 
uh, passport number, receipt number, th- th- those are very common in part one of your listening test. So you have to be able to recognize them so that you will be able to hear them accurately and to take down note in the process. Joanne is pronounced as Joan. Joanne, tawag natin Joanne, ano, sa pronunciation natin. It should be Joanne. All right. Trevor is Trevor. Stevenson is pronounced as Stevenson. Stevenson is pronounced as Stevenson. Okay. Medyo stiff yung Stevenson. All right. Medyo madiin yung teeth upper part ng inyong teeth. Next is seven is pronounced as seven. Exactly how my uh, Cebuana aunt calls me. Kevin. Okay. So, very bisaya itong si seven. Ano? All right. So, you know how to count using the Australian accent already. So, you have to be careful. with uh, the ways how they pronounce these numbers for uh, ayaw nating malito we have to be uh, able to improve our knowledge how the numbers are pronounced because they will be enumerated like fifty dollars seven pounds eight i am and instead of eight am eight i am Yeah, that's I. Kasi nga, yung A naging I. So, yung pati yung A am naging I am. Okay, so that's how they pronounce those words. Next is your uh, tomorrow. It's uh, pronounced as tomorrow. Muri is pronounced as Muri instead of Mure. So, instead of saying Jamal Mure, it's Jamal Muri. David is pronounced as David. Thanks is Thanks. Yui. So, magi siyang, Thank you. Thank you, mate. And eh, di ba? Number is pronounced as Noimba. Can I get your Noimba? Kevin. Yeah, here it is. It is zero. Eight, seven, noi, noi, zero. Okay. So, you have to be careful. All right. Tomorrow and Muri. David. Thanks. Thank you. Noimba. Australian English vocabulary for their slang. Like American English, has absorbed numerous American Indian words be- because before the people from Great Britain came and colonized America and Australia, there are natives. Like in the Philippines, we have Aitas. In America, they have American Indians. You know, if you remember Pocahontas, okay, yun yung natives nila, Indians, and I-N-J-U-N-S, iba yun sa India, people from India with their uh, beards and uh, chicken curry powders, okay? But when it comes to the Australian English, the natives there, commonly, we would be expecting... The, what, what we call aboriginals aboriginals um, if you guys have watched the film Moana those are some samples of aboriginal natives if you know Patty Mills from San Antonio's purse it's, he's also a native uh, aboriginal from Australia so their hair is curly their skin tone is darker okay than uh, than the usual so and that is because Mahilig sila mag-surf, mahilig sila sa island. So, kaya medyo nabilad sila sa araw. Okay. So, yung mga words such as billibong, alright? That is a watering hole. Next, you have your kulaba. That is a type of tree. Karaburi, that is a ceremony. Nala nala, that's a club. Like, hey mate, we should go check out some nala nalas. It means you're going to a club. Wallaby, that sees more and more... kangaroo that's a marsupial so when you say wallaby this is different from a kangaroo because a kangaroo has pouch kung saan nilalagay yung kanyang young but the wallaby doesn't have one next is wombat wombat is an animal that can glide through the air Wumera, this is the word boomerang was derived from that's a weapon that when you throw it comes back to you whirly that is a sh- simple shelter so that's the term they call a simple shelter whirly Next is colorful expression for their accent also abound. Like a greasy spot. When you say like a greasy spot, it's hot and sweaty. So when you 
hear them say, It's like a greasy spot here in Kamantu and City. It means that it's really hot and sweaty, mainit at ma malata ano dito sa kabanatuan. Like a stunned Millie. It means in a daze. Have you seen Kevin? Yeah, I saw him a while ago. He's like a stunned Millie. He's in a daze. Gawa madali. Like a dog's breakfast. Hey son, look at your bed. It's like a dog's breakfast. It means it's a mess. If it's likes a dog's breakfast. And they pronounce breakfast as breakfast. As in brick. Na brick, P-R-I-C-K. And fist. Na kamay, breakfast. Alright. And then up a gum tree. Okay. In trouble. Why did you ask? Where is Kevin? Is he up a gum tree again? It means, is he in trouble again? Alright. Mad as a gum tree full of gallus. Yeah, he did something mad as a gum tree full of gallus. He did something insane. Okay. Happy as a bastard on a Father's Day. When I learn I won the lottery, I'm happy as a bastard on a Father's Day. So, it means very happy. Haba-haba nung sinabi. Happy lang naman pala yung sasabihin. Ano? Dry as a dead dingo's donger. Hey, Kevin, can you check out the laundry outside? If it's dry as a dead dingo's donger. Kung tuyo na ba? Haba-haba nang sasabihin. Dry as a dead dingo's donger. Pwede naman palang dry lang. But you know, this is their colorful expression. So, we should um, stick with it somehow. And then, yeah. Okay, as I've mentioned, most of the Australian accent also like to shorten the word. So instead of hearing the word Aussie, they, you will hear the word Australian instead. Chalky is for teacher. Chewy is for chewing gum. You have your chalky for your chocolate. So don't mistake chalky na teacher sa chalky na chocolate. Kasi baka iba yun, di ba? So um, coldy is a cold beer. Cosy is a swimming costume. Let me fit my kasi. Ah, diba? Sabihin, susukat ko lang yung aking swimming costume. Footy, that's football. Australian rules, of course. Ang kinaiba ng Australian football sa American football is that si Australian football, we call it also rugby, and wala silang mga protective gears. Si American football naman, meron silang helmet, tsaka meron silang equipment to protect their midsection para mabawasan yung injury. And then you have your Frenchie, it's a condom. So see how the accent and words differ. When you ask for Frenchie in the US, most probably bibigyan ka nila ng French fries. When you ask for a Frenchie in Europe, you would probably get a kiss because of the French kiss. And when you ask for Frenchie in Australia, you would hear you would be given a condom. So see, kailangan ayusin mo yung ano, yung pagkasalita mo para malaman mo kung nasaan lugar ka, ano yung dapat mong hingin for Frenchie. And then you have your Frosty, that's a cold beer. Snowman naman ito sa US, si Frosty the Snowman. Joke-joke lang, September na kasi, syempre. Medyo Pasko na tayo ng onte. Garbo means garbage man. O sabihin mo sa friend mo, friend, alam mo, ang garbo-garbo naman ang suot mo. Ha? Friend, thank you. Hindi niya alam. Ibig sabihin ng garbo ay garbage man. Okay. Next is lavy for lavatory. Lippy for lipstick. Most of you guys already heard this. And then lollies for sweets. Mossy for mosquitoes. So they call it mossy instead of the full word mosquitoes. Then you have your mushies for mushroom. Oldies for one's parents. Then you got rallies for relatives. Like, let us see my rallies. Sabihin, papakilala kita sa mga kamag-anak ko. Okay? Sammy for sandwich. And then you got your sicky for sick day. Then smoko for cigarette break. Sunnies for sunglasses. Those are some of the words which are spoken in their America, or rather in Australian slang. They shorten the word, they end it with either E or O. Okay, like lippy, smoko, garbo, lavi, mossy, sunny. Yeah. So that would be the end of your Australian accent. I would be scanning some of the materials here so that your Listening practice for Australian accent would be conducted at home. So, after this uh, recording, which I will be uploading today, um, I will also comment the link in which you can download the listening file and at the same time the listening reco- uh, the listening audio for it as well. So, that will be the end of your Australian accent. And then, practice your Australian accent recognition 
especially on the exercise that I will be uploading together with this video. So probably it would take 40 minutes, 30 minutes to listen. You can take down note, you may print it out first, it's up to you. And then please take note, you transfer the answers later on your answer sheet. Of course, you have to provide one for yourself as well. And that's it. Good luck, everyone.